Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is going to take a look at a skill we don't directly teach very often. Maybe they do modern day, but they didn't do it when I was growing up, that's for sure. Debugging in Visual Studio, or just debugging in general. We're going to be debugging specifically C++ code, but it really doesn't matter. It's inside Visual Studio. And again, it's just the Visual Studio way of doing things. Every IDE does the same stuff, but they probably use different keys and different ways to get going. So here is an example program. I have, you can go through the code if you want. And I go, it's just going to average two numbers together. I go enter a value and I go five, enter another value and I go seven. What do you anticipate the average should be? This is a big part of programming also is just thinking out and and sanity checking your results, not just trusting that it works. Because if you just trust this and you hit enter and you go, oh, it's, oh, eight, sure. Well, you should be screaming out, no, the average between five and seven should be six. So what is going on? Like there is something wrong with my program somewhere, somehow. And oh my goodness, we have to figure out where that is. So what do we do? And so what do you do? Like they say, when I was growing up, I would put a ton of print statements in and I would just, the like, program would run and run and run and you go, oh my goodness, then you would just go, oh, there it is, the sixth iteration through this loop, something goes terribly wrong or something like that. Or in this case, we know the printout is wrong, but what, do we, you know, but what, is, what exactly is wrong? So let me just show you a few ways where you can actually pause your program and step through your code because that's a huge part a big a big giant difference rather than just print 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 and when you're dealing with video game stuff you can't even do that because the game is running at 60 frames per second and a lot of times if you pause the game there's a lot of things that are time dependent because it's a whole different paradigm uh, event driven architecture versus just the the old the old way of doing things things aren't going to work like you expect. So what you can do over here, and it's gr you see this gray box over here? This is your debugging area. I know it's like, what did you ever think that was, right? Here are your lines of code, and here's the numbered lines of code, and so forth and so on. But what I can do is put a little click right here. And it used to be a little octagon. I guess they got over that. Just made it a red circle. And that means my, po my program will actually pause. If I hit F5 and run Visual Studio, there you go. You can see my program is paused. And that's because it hit the, you see a little yellow arrow, and, the, and it hit the breakpoint, and it paused my program. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so now the program is waiting. It hasn't run this line of code yet. That's why you don't see anything printed out here. But from here, what do I do, right? Like, how do I continue on? And so your best friends, there's three keys on the keyboard now. There's F5, F10, and uh, we'll show F11 in a little bit. We can't show that one directly right now. So what I want to do is like, okay, if I if I ever said, oh, I that was an accident, I hit my breakpoint. What did I do? I hit F5. That basically tells the it tells the compiler, it tells your debugger that you are done debugging, and basically just continue on as if as if I, nothing ever happened, and it will run until the program either ends or it finds another breakpoint. So in this case, there is no other breakpoint, so the program will just run as if it did before, and I can put five and seven in, and I still get the number eight. That's not good, right? So let's try this again. And there is my enter value, and it's paused. And what I can do instead here is hit F10. And F10 means run that specific line of code and go to the next line. And you'll notice this isn't really a, this isn't a line of code that can be executed because just setting up a variable doesn't actually do anything. It's just because the com the compiler has already set all of that up before the the program even runs. And so you can see there's my C out statement, and now the the cursor's blinking, but it really isn't. I can't type anything in right now, but I can if I hit F10 one more time to be like okay. But the program is paused. There are all those keys, right? I pressed, oh my goodness, GGGFFFF, all that's like enter my value. I press five, I hit enter. It goes to the next line of code. And now what's cool about this is anytime you're inside of here, you can mouse over the variables that are in scope. And so now the A variable has a five. My B, it exists because it's in scope because it's a local variable in the way that the computer sets up local variables when a function begins. But you can notice that it's basically garbage data. And that's because it's been uninitialized. 
And so right now in time, like if I like if I wanted to print out B, it would print out garbage. But the compiler wouldn't even let me do it. It would give me a compiler error saying I'm trying to use uninitialized data. So just F10 again. So it prints out that it still won't let me do anything with it. F10 again. And so now I can also I can put in my seven. And so now I have there's my five, there's my seven. And so, so everybody's happy right now. So A and B is correct, right? Let's just, let's just, you know, let's just, you know, this is boring, tedious stuff. But this is what debugging is all about. It's very powerful, very important. That at this moment in time, when I get to the, when I get to the calculation stage, all of my inputs were correct because maybe something went wrong. But in this case, A is five, B is seven. So yes, we're expecting to see a six, but we don't. And so I hit F10 again. The average is garbage right now until I actually set it up. But now it's that eight value. You're like, something's terribly wrong. So this line of code, line 13, and again, if you don't sanity check it and you just trust the results, you'll never get to that point where you see that there's something wrong with that line of code. But now that we know, we sanity checked it and go, that ain't right, that there's something going on here. And maybe you see it. Hopefully you do. And it's just the fact that we, the PEMDAS rules of mathematical operations are screaming out that this division is being done first rather than the addition I was expecting. And so you can hit shift, shift F5 to quit your program if you're happy with whatever, you know, sh and that'll close down your program and it'll eliminate all the breakpoints and everything that you got going for you. But now if I put parentheses around this and I try again, let's get rid of the breakpoint and just run the program. You can see I enter five, I enter seven, and I get my six. Isn't that great? So I'm getting, you know, and you, again, you're like, oh, I got my, I'm done. And you submit this, and then later on you get like a 95% on this, and you go, what is going on? Because you didn't, now, you know, testing, debugging, testing. When I was working with the slot machine company, the, you know, making video games every day, fun stuff for four or five years there. Um, basically, when we started a project, the first two months were the fun part because we we're making the game. And it was fun to just build all that stuff. But the next six to ten months of time were testing and testing and testing and debugging and testing and getting, make, making sure that this game worked no matter what anyone tried to do to it when they were out playing the game at the casino or nowadays at one of those dotties or wherever it is that you find these things at a gas station now. But now you're like, well, it worked, five and seven. Well, what about five and six? Five, six, and it comes out as five. And so this is, you know, so that's, that's a problem. Like, that better be a problem to you that the average is, <laughs> the average better be 5.5. And so what do we do? So we're just coming back again, and you're like, well, what in the world is happening? But now that we know that things are happening here, we can just put the breakpoint right there. Or, you know, if you want to, you know, wherever you feel, because part of this is you, tr you just sometimes you just take a stab in the dark because like, like in this, I could obviously know where the problem is. But what if you don't know where the problem is? You, ba you basically just take a stab in the dark and then you just and you just keep going until you find a point where something's wrong. And then sometimes you just you just work your way backwards and work your way backwards. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, a half hour. Sometimes it takes half a day. And this is legit out there in the world where it sometimes takes half a day just to find where the thing's going wrong in the first place. Or maybe that, maybe I was just, maybe that was just me being a junior developer. But it takes a while to debug and work your way back to find exactly what went wrong. And usually once you find that, then it's easy. Once you find the, the offending line of code, it's usually a, a pretty quick fix up. So again, so just be like, what is wrong with this line of code? I have a double, right? I have an int and int, I have a double. Average comes out, oops, I run my line of code. It comes out as 5.00000. And so this is one of those things where you, you have to become experienced with what you're staring at and just the way programming is. If A is five and B is six, and so five plus six is 11, 11 divided by two is 5.5. So what is exactly wrong? And it just comes down to, you have to have that understanding that I'm dealing with integers, a plus B turns into an int. Int divided by int uses integer division. And that's where my problem is for this last step of this. And that just comes down to just understanding that 2, as it's written here, is a, an integer. So int divided by int gives me integer division. Even though this is a double, even, aver even though average is a double, it's integer division 
This ends up with a 5, and that's why it comes out as 5.00000. It's because it, the integer math was then converted into a double value. And so if 2 by itself is int, is a literal value, 2.0 is what I want. I want to make sure that this is registered as a double so that one of the two parts of the division is non-integer. It's a floating point, so it'll actually go down a different path and generate floating point arithmetic, so I'll get my 5.5. I'll put my 5, put my 6, and so yeah, there's my 5, there's my 6, F10, my average is now 5.5, and a better printout, there it is, and there's my correct answer, 5.5. And so I'm there, at least with this program, at least finding this specific bug, you know, very simple bug, obviously, but just to get the point across, there you go. So F5 and F10 are your best friends, Setting up breakpoints F5, F10 are your best friends. So, um, so to, to kind of continue on here, um, there are other ways. You don't have to just mouse over things. That's just that's pretty you know, pretty nice to be able to do. Oops, let me set up a. I, you can set up a breakpoint while your program is running, which is nice. It doesn't have to be. It does, it's not static or anything like that. So I put a five and a six in, and I put my breakpoint in. But what I can also do down here, I can bring my windows up a little bit is that you can see I have autos, I have what, I can set up watches. I could be like, okay, right click on this thing. I know it's hard to find, add watch, and there it is, A, and it gives me my five value, and it's a type int. So maybe you probably like this a lot better, right? Because you can add watch, and there you go. And then average, uh, add watch. And so there we go, and you can see that. There's five, there's six, there's 5.5 as a double, and let's try it out one more time. Let's put a breakpoint up top and just check out this. There you go. Garbage, 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 garbage so far. F10. Give me an input. Oops, not yet. i got to put it over here. So I, I enter 6, and there it goes, right? My A has now become 6, and I go F10, F10. Enter another value, uh, 94. And there we go. There's my 6 and my 94. Average the two things together. I get my 50 print out the 50 and I'm good to go. So I didn't have this in like the IDEs I, were work, I was working with back in the past, didn't have the, the watch list. It was very surprising how it was a very different environment than the one that we have here. But you can see that Visual Studio you know, makes things nice and easy. You can mouse over the values that, that are in scope. But if they're not in scope, they won't show you anything. Like if I have an if, like if I have something inside of an if statement or something like that, it won't show me anything like that. But anything that is in scope, wherever you are at the current moment, wherever in the program, it will show you everything you have access to. Okay, so that that pretty much covers the basics. Now let me show you one extra step here when it comes to jumping into and coming out of functions. Okay, so I've changed things up just a little bit to show you the the, the last part of this at least from an introductory standpoint. And so I've created a function that does the work of getting the average. So I was saying down here, I just did the work, but I just moved it up here into a function. Give me an A, give me a B, I'll add them together, divide by two, give you a double result. And so just like before, everything works out just fine. So there is my function, uh, variable equals function, and then everything else works the same. And I've tested it a few times and we're happy, but just to, just to show you, so now I hit five, and six, and we're expecting to see 5.5. It's garbage again because we haven't executed this line of code yet. So all I've taught you to this moment is F5 and F10. So if I hit F10, it runs through the line of code. It does everything inside of here and goes to the next line. It's a, what do they call that? Where is that? Where is debug? That is called a step over, F10. So it steps over and does everything. And it did all the work, and there's my 5.5. And it will print out the 5.5 and do everything else, there's my system pause and everything, there we go. And so you see that it's working. But what? But if you know the problem is inside that function, you know, coming, coming back to this kind of thing, where like you know something's wrong inside of this line of code, but the only thing that's going on is this function. And so what you can do here, instead of F10, you can do step into, I put F, you know, I just did this over here, five and six, and now hit by hitting F11, you have the choice, and now you'll see this arrow takes me up into the function. And so at this moment, there's my five, there's my six, those are my local, those are my parameters. 
that are passed in. There's my five, there's my six, and you can see, and it's tricky with this, sometimes when you know something's, something's wrong, like this is nice and simple code, but it's very difficult. The compiler will not help me, the debugger will not help me figure out which part of this went wrong. Because it's not going to show me. It's just going to, I'm just, if I hit F10, what, there's nothing, the, the watch doesn't come up with anything. And if made proof, you know, show me if you know how to do this, the return value, how to put the return value in here. Because I don't know how, I don't think there's a way to do that. Maybe there is. But right now, I don't know what I'm returning until I hit F10 to come back. Because the, fu the function ends and I come back. Average is still, isn't that weird? Even though I came back from the function, my average still has not been set to that value. It will not show me what this is. I can try so hard, but I've hit, if I hit F10 one more time, there I will go. There's my 5.0. Something's wrong, and so now I can know. You know, I can at least bring it back to here and go. Something's wrong inside of my get average function, and so that's where the point is. You have to kind of work your way through, and sometimes something like this, you just go double value equals. So you, just so that you can see what happens as you go because there was something wrong with that so let's now i know that the problem is there i can move the breakpoint to the place or even down here do the calculation and tell me what's wrong so there i put oops oops no no anyway i hit f i hit five i put six in and so there we go and there's my 5.0 so i know the in this case this is the only line of code and it's not working and that's where i can go ahead and go back and go aha I'm doing integer division when I'm not expecting to. And so then I can run this one more time. Oops, run this one more time. Put a five, put a six in, and then go, okay, the, oops, sorry. There's my 5.5, F10, 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 F10. And then it prints out, oops, that's not even, that's not the right one, is it? Nope, that's, there we go. There's my 5.5. That was a previous execution that didn't get erased when I quit the program. And you'll have to watch out for that if you use debugger more, more and more often because I have a tendency to leave my programs running non, you probably noticed it already. I forget to close it every single time. So there's my 5.5, I am I got what I've, I want, and then I can go ahead and just kind of step it back. And now I'm good to go. And now I'm, you know, this brings us back to where we were when we first started, but just to show you what was going on there. So there's my 5.5 and I'm done. So just to recap, you say, Click in the gray area for breakpoints. And I'm not even taught there's conditional breakpoints and all sorts of other things that are a little more complicated. And you'll figure them out as you go, just these basics. F5, F5 is your best friend, right? It's like, it just says continue, continue running until, until you hit the breakpoint. Hit, hit breakpoint or program ends. Right, because I can I hit F5 to start my program, to run it, and there it runs. There's no breakpoint, so it's just going to continue on. The program ended, but if I put a if I put a breakpoint here, the program will run until it hits that breakpoint. So that's that's absolutely true of what F5 does. But if I hit F5 again, boink, it'll continue on as if nothing as if nothing's holding it back, and it's done until it, until it runs and it hits another breakpoint or the program ends. So F10, step over. And so that means even if there's a function, it will not handle, it will just, it'll run the function, do all the work, but it won't go into it. It'll just, it'll just step through it and just do all the work and still take you to the next line of code. And then F11, step into. That will actually take you into the function. Sometimes you want to go in there and sometimes you don't. So you have to watch out, you have to pay attention to which of these uh, processes you want to you want to do because it's like sometimes I want to jump through but sometimes I you just want to just get to the get to the point move on and do other things so I hope this was helpful I, even though this was only 15 20 minutes or something this is one of those things darn it I wish they showed me how to do this stuff back in the day and give me some practice on it because uh, yeah, especially when you get out in the real world and your code you're 16 functions into into something, nothing's working, and it's not any of your code, and you're trying to figure it out, it can be very daunting to, to, to cycle through and figure out where things went wrong. So I hope this was very helpful for you. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want me to do more with this, I'm always happy just 
send me at uh, send me an email at swordb at cod.edu or of course uh, send a comment here on YouTube and I will see about making that video for you. So hope this was very helpful. It's a very important skill to have and it's relatively simple once you get the hang of it and you'll <laughs> I went from print statements to using breakpoints and it was the greatest it was like the greatest thing ever I felt so smart and so powerful that I now had more control over the computer than I ever did so again thanks everybody for sticking through this we'll see you next time